What happened to you, Playboy? You used to be great. I guess it can really come down to Hugh Hefner passing on, and with him leaving, so does the legacy of Playboy, which was primarily classy smut, but, you know, classy and refined smut. I remember some of the older magazines um, that used to try to compete, like, you know, your Hustlers and um, Cherries, but Playboy, they were, you know, the, the one that wore a bow tie, you know? <laughs> they were, hey, 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 we can be classy about this. I mean, Hugh Hefner, the man was a legend, and he was all about the class. And now, here we are in 2019, and Playboy is interviewing Tarana Burke, a candid conversation with the activist who launched Me Too more than a decade before Weinstein Gate. Now, I know the letters are over her face, but it doesn't take much imagination to, <laughs> to realize that she does not get the 35%, okay? Like, ugh, I'm not trying to be mean, but she really does look like this rapper named KRS-One, who is a dude, all right? <laughs> and, you know, when it comes to Miss Burke, because this isn't the first time that she's on my radar, I will never doubt, I, I, I will never, I don't want to say not doubt a woman's uh, story, because, I mean, I'm all about doubting people's stories, but at the same time, I won't sit here and outright say, well, you know, who would, who would sit there and forcibly enter her? Nope, 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 nope. I have seen way too many dudes with little to no standards to be like, oh, no, she could never have a traumatic situation, such as the one that she under, she, she reportedly underwent, um, happened to her. But at the same time, this is being milked. They like this right here is the last remnants of this whole Me Too thing because a it's in Playboy, not Rolling Stone, not um any of the other art um um uh, publications, but it's in Playboy, which really makes me feel like they're wiping uh, their behinds with Hugh Hefner and his legacy. Because if you don't think Hugh Hefner would have gotten hit with some Me Too allegations. At, particularly after all the females that he's interacted with throughout the course of his life. If um, he were alive when this was taking place, mm, I doubt it, homie. But we have this article written by Dream Hampton and the photography is by Carissa Ga Galo. But we're not getting into the entire thing because it's ridiculously long. I just want to go into some of the points that they bring up and really just play, kind of skim it and play it by ear. All right. So before Me Too was a hashtag, before social media gave everyday people the power to have public conversations about sexual harassment, assault, and forced, forced entry, and before the inevitable and ongoing backlash, Toronto Burke was working with young girls, most of them black, encouraging them to share their most traumatic stories by offering her own. Now 45 years old, only 45? The Bronx-bred activist has spent some two decades providing space for those testimonies. Did she, though? In, 20, in 2003, Burke launched an organization that would eventually become Just Be Incorporated, offering fellowship and programming meant to empower young women of color. One of its first campaigns, which Burke named Me Too, showed survivors of all genders, there's only two, that even their darkest trauma could be processed within a community. That together, they could change what feminists have long called forced entry culture. Soon, Burke's organization relocated from Selma, Alabama, near her alma mater of Auburn University, to, out to Philadelphia. In 2015, having reached thousands of girls, she moved, she moved back to New York and put the program on hiatus. Flash forward to October 15th, 2017, 10 days after the New York Times published a landmark story on the sexual assault allegations against Harvey Weinstein, who's still not going to jail. Interestingly enough, he settled because really a lot of these allegations were just looking for a payday. The name of Burke's campaign went viral thanks to a tweet by Alyssa Milano. <laughs> Talk about a, a, a quickly diminishing asset. Burke felt blindsided. And now that scores of powerful men have been taken to task. Really? Who? Who? I mean, outside of Weinstein and Louis C.K., like, really? Everything, every, all there, the rest of them were flamed out, and as did Weinstein and Louis C.K. The only guys that you guys are really knocking off are black men, Dr. Cosby, R. Kelly. They, they, they keep trying to re, um, regurgitate uh, Chris Brown. So come on, man, miss me with this nonsense. 
<sighs> and now that scores of powerful men have been taking a task and Me Too has come to define this historical moment, she is an icon, a reluctant icon, but one with the substance and vision to make the moment a movement. Yeah, a bowel movement, okay? Like, let's be real, there's... <laughs> If anything, the me the last few years when it comes to the Me Too um, allegations and everything else like that, it's just reiterated female nature to me. How most of this is about money, and and there's a lot of revisionist history that took place as well. You know, um, when it comes to you know, oh well, you know, I, at the time I thought it was consensual, but now you know, like oh, with all these actresses, right, who went on and got their awards, got their paychecks, and everything else like that, and in most cases voluntarily laid down with the man, I, to sit here now and and come back retroactively, this is why honestly Trump's going to win a second, uh, going to win re-election is because you know people are noticing that people are noticing. That, yeah, a lot of this was revisionist history and females who don't who who saw an opportunity to take advantage, really not more or less. The blowback against Me Too has been no less sweeping than its viral reincarnation. It looks like Secretary of Education Betsy DeVos dismantling Title IX on college campuses, privileging the reputations of young men accused of rape. It looks like Louis C.K. quietly returning to the stage, his routine unaffected after a, after initial half-hearted apology. It looks like Russell Simmons posting hashtag not me after several women accused him of forced entry. It looks like Wall Street firms warning men, Mike Pence style, to avoid off-site meetings with their women colleagues, the implication being that the real threat is false accusations. And it looks like Burke facing condemnation from certain black men who accused her of race betrayal for publicly standing with the accusers of Simmons, Bill Cosby, Nate Parker, and R. Kelly. Honestly, it, it, there's no such thing. See, a woman's loyalty is tied to her, um, is basically tied to her finances for the most part. You know, the, there is no race loyalty when it comes to women. They're all pink on the inside. I hope you realize this like back um back when uh, during World War Two, when Germany was invade when Germany was invaded. Right. Um, they what's the name like the, the, the a lot of the women who men got killed and turned off. They nestled up with the um, NZs. Can you dig it? Because their loyalty is tied directly to their hypergamy. Hey, whoever's in charge, that's who I'm messing with. <laughs> that's what that is. So, I mean, as far as looking to looking for loyalty from like a female, it's it is directly linked with um, what she has to gain from it. As she fields the vitriol with sources ranging from anonymous trolls to all White House press secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders, Burke is subject to another sort of attention. She's constantly spotted in public and pulled into corners where survivors not only thank her for her work, but often share unsolicited the stories of their own trauma. She has built some boundaries while navigating her newfound status as one of the most recognizable women in the country. Really? Because you, I mean, uh, not to be a jerk about this, but I don't know. I think we could, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's uh, quite a few places where we could stroll and you'll be okay. Other boundaries she formed after suffering abuse as a child. And of hope, in the hope of getting a glimpse, uh, oh my goodness, I'm having a hard time with this one. And the hope of glimpsing the future of Me Too and its creator, we partnered with Dream Hampton, writer, filmmaker, activist, and executive producer of Surviving R. Kelly, the Lifetime docuseries that broke records when it aired in January. <laughs> The series features Burke as an on-screen expert in what getting diddled? Come on, man. Like, yo, like, look, your trauma don't make you an expert in nothing. I've been shot at. That don't make me a trauma. That don't make me an expert in how to not get shot. That just means that time I got lucky. This past March, Burke and Hampton met up in New Orleans. Burke, who spends mo much of her time on the road, was in town for the season two premiere of the video series Professional Black Girl. Hampton reports New Orleans is a city that celebrates sex and fertility and the awakening of spirit in the ancient way by playing naked and in public with a days long parade. The city was an early home away from Burke. A home away from home for Burke, one where, as a teenage activist, she learned strategy from uh, from the Southerners she convened with during 
leadership development camps, her peers would teach her the ancient art of pee popping, which we, oh my, oh, gross, gross. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to be able to get through this um, article because she laughs in person. She laughs easily and, and put a pin in that. We're going to get back to it. She flirts. Ugh. She shows up for her girlfriend, supporting their projects and passions and gossip in group chats. She's a mother. And we often talk about what it's like to parent a 20 something. Okay. Yeah. I think I'm done. I think I'm done reading um, this, but you know, ugh, I don't want to hear about this lady. Like this is, oh, this is worse than Whoopi Goldberg and her, <laughs> and her stay out of my coochie line. Like, mm, no, nah, I don't want to, I don't want to do all that, but you know, this is a this is a full uh, Miss Burke right here. This is a full photo of Miss Burke, really uh, venerating a lot of masculine energy because she's very masculine. I won't be surprised if she's a uh, if, if she's a lesbian or you know bisexual, whatever the this gendered uh, this gendered world we live in. Maybe some like you know petite white KRS KRS one fan hollered at her <laughs> like I oh, don't know. Yeah, this is Miss. This is Miss Burke, guys. This is Miss Burke, and let's pull, pull the pin out of her laughing easy because doesn't she like? I mean, this is just from looks, but doesn't she seem she have one of those <laughs> kind of laughs, like super heavy, like <laughs> type of laughs? See, look at it. Tell me this doesn't. Tell me this doesn't match. <laughs> It totally matches. And by the way, we truly are living back in the 90s now with those hoop earrings and that hairstyle. My God. I mean, I'm surprised she's just not wearing Carl Kanai and has a, and doesn't have a big Africa medallion around her uh, neck. My goodness. That's a lot of dude energy that she's putting. That's a lot of dude energy, my man. Like, seriously. Deal is, Playboy, you fell off, man. Like, yo, you used to be a champion of you know, the whole uh, of sexual liberation and, and women and enjoying the feminine and, and enjoying female frames and the female body. And now that I, I'm assuming you have women running you, you're a trash publication and, it'll, and I'll be happy to watch you die a slow death. I mean, seriously. And, and, and it's Playboy that Tarana Burke had to uh, go into because guess what? Nobody else is going to take you seriously, darling. I mean, like, I hate to I hate to break this and be very um just blunt with you but you're a clown you're a clown show the only reason that they talk to you about this is because they done ran out of fuel with all the other white ladies and they're just doing this as a last ditch um effort to make sure the me too thing you know bears some kind of fruit but unfortunately outside of r kelly and cosby and the guys that y'all were act the black men y'all were actually able to get because y'all wasn't able to catch anybody else of a lighter skin tone then you know it, it's done it's done so. And my God, yo. <laughs> my God. Playboy, I'm so disappointed. Because you used to be the shit. You used to be hit, man. But now, this is nuts. And I don't want to risk talking about this woman's genitalia again. So we're going to bring this video to an end. All the internet stuff. Like it if you liked it. Or don't. I ain't scared of you. Sub if you enjoy my fantastic voice. Share because sharing is caring and speak. Let me know what do you think. Do you think the Me Too is going to get hit with a resurgence or you think it's done? Because really, what else could what else can they get? Who else can they get? They sat there, made raised all this money, and real talk. That's the fun part about ladies, right? Y'all can spend it. Y'all can spend it faster than you can earn it. So with that being said, hit me up in the comments and until the next one.